Hi, and welcome to KB Hurst and her Menagerie podcast. Author, podcaster, sometimes artist, a little bit of this, a dash of that, and who knows what else. Welcome, and hope you enjoy the show. Alrighty, good uh, evening. Is it evening? What's yeah. evening? Good yeah. evening. Good this is DJ Abby with me, who's hey. also my cousin. No big deal. So pretty cool. I know. You are on WQMX. And WZIP. And WZIP. If you're in the Akron or Cleveland area, you might have heard her on the radio. Or Canton. That too. Yeah, that's true. Lots of uh, country music fans in Canton. Country or hip hop? Oh. It's, there, there really is like no limitation to your ability to become a music. You're amazing. It runs in the family. It's true. We are on this. We are definitely. She's my second cousin. I always joke she's my baby cousin. So whenever I share her stuff on my business page on Facebook or on Twitter, there's also a threat that comes with it. And I will, I will do things to you if you're mean to her. If you call in in the middle of the night. Yeah. So don't do it. You were so hex you. So tell everybody a little bit about you are midnight to 6 a.m. on Saturdays. So I actually just got a promotion. So I awesome. was I was working the graveyard shift as everyone does coming into radio. Um, and then I got promoted to 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, on Saturdays and Sundays. Nice. Yeah, so you may hear me. I go by just Abby, Abby J on WZIP, but Abby at WQMAC, so. J, Abby. Yep. <laughs> All or just same. baby cousin in my case. <laughs> baby cousin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So tonight we are, um, we just finished actually, we were talking about what we were going to talk about. And so we ended up with the Noble Vines. It was a birthday gift from my friend Millie because I'm old now, officially. I turned 26 for the 20th year. I keep telling her, I'm 26. I keep telling her that 40 is is the new 20s. I'm actually 43. I don't care who knows that. That's young. I don't think I look horribly old for 43, but Noble Vines uh, 337 is where it's at. It's a Cabernet. It has, what was it, blackberry and Black, blueberry. Hold on. We have to look. We were supposed to memorize this. Okay. So it has, with its rich, full bodied cherry, cherry and blackberry notes. Mm. Aha. Mm-hmm. So tonight, everyone, thank you for visiting. Uh, it won't be a long podcast, but this is my first podcast officially on Anchor and some other places. I don't remember which because it's my one that has not just been strictly uh, YouTube. So I decided to start this as part of an extra to my WordPress blog and story. For those of you that do not know who I am, I also am a horror writer and I work a secret job during the day, but at night I write horror stories to save the world from pestilence. Yes. They're pretty great. Gotta yeah. check them out. They are. Uh, but that aside, uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about modern dating. See, I'm old and I'm married, so I'm like way out of the scene. But my friend Abby here has some stories for you that haunting. are haunting. This is why we're in this haunting look. These are haunting date- dating stories. Yeah. To teach you lessons, children. Yeah, don't do not do what I do. Just <laughs> learn from me. <laughs> don't follow me. Don't do it. Learn. <laughs> it's true. She has some amazing stories. But also... It's all about confidence. Isn't yeah, that I got thing plenty of it. Yeah. So in the modern dating world, like in like I met my husband and he pretty much moved in like a week later. So I don't really think I ever dated anybody in my 20s. That's I your just, first red flag. Don't do that. I but know. it worked. For it them. worked for me. That, that don't ever do that. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It usually doesn't work. But for some people, it does. I was 27 when I met my husband. Now 43. So I've been together oh, for a very long time. Yeah, you'll you'll find someone, and it'll be like he'll be literally in in a dumpster, like diving for shoes that he left. That's how you meet the person that you love. I it's don't in the know most if weird. That's who I'd go for. It's always the most weird thing, and that's the person you end up with. Most likely, it's gonna be seriously. Weird. It's always like that's been my experience. I want, been, a, I want a fun story. My one of my best friends met her husband. They were working together, and they didn't really like each other, and they became friends, and then they now they're married. No kids, but they're married. I don't have kids. I have puppies. Who wants, them? Who wants kids? Not me. Well, I helped raise my nephew for several years, so that was child enough for me. You got your hand full, children. So back 
to interviewing. So I don't know. I feel weird like interviewing you because you're my cousin, but I've been excited for her to come on to my podcast for a very long time because her stories are freaking amazing. They're interesting for sure. Oh my God. They're so interesting. Um, so I guess the, we'll start with dating apps. Uh, How many dating apps have you used? Okay. So let's start Should we rate with... them? Yeah. Oh, we can, we can definitely rate them. <laughs> They're all definitely. So if I were to like, you know, God forbid I end up in the single world again, what would be some <laughs> things that I should avoid? Tinder. Tinder. Well, that's Bumble. a hookup site, right? A Bumble. No, it's a dating site. They made it. They, as in men made it into hookup sites they're not supposed yeah. to be hookup sites um so what you will meet off of tinder are yeah i don't care. fuck boys um human traffickers Hopefully. that's a fun story oh um and just fucking creeps to be honest so see kids things not to avoid it's it's a good i it's a good thing to tell people what apps have then have you had the most success with you think mm, no. none of them none of them so no. do you are you one of those people then are kind of old-fashioned where you prefer like meeting people in person or I'm, phone I'm or very old fashioned. Fashioned. yeah I'm very I'm very old-fashioned when it comes to dating like I always tell everyone that I wish I was born like 20 in the 90s that way I feel like I could have experienced life way different From social media yeah I'm honestly like social media is really cool and I appreciate all that it's done because it's given so many opportunities for people but like it's also kind of torn apart mm -hmm. the personalities and like people don't have personalities in real life. It's just all on social media. And then we well, I find it, I find it very interesting that people have certain, you know, go-tos now. Like, you know, they they prefer to only talk to someone online for a really long time until they get to know them and then they want to meet them. But by then it's like, what if you're so disappointed by the time you meet them? You know, it's like I I prefer to meet someone in person or you know, at least video chat. Yeah. You know. Yeah, meeting people like on, so my biggest thing with Tinder and Bumble has been like, you will talk to somebody for about a week and you'll make plans and then you'll both just act like you never made plans and you never talked and you won't ever talk to each other again. Lovely. Or another thing I'm having experience with is like when I first started Tinder, I was hmm, 21 okay. and I was in like the hookup phase of my life okay. and I didn't want relationships. I had just got out of a marriage. But yeah, some divorce at 26. It's fine, healthy. Um, so I just so many, she's very experienced, guys. I'm telling yeah. you, she's very experienced. Very experienced. Yep. So um, I was divorced, so I was like in a hoe phase, if you will. So I'm like, I don't really want to date. I really just did want to hook up. So I did use Tinder as a I kind of skipped that phase and just ended up. Yeah, yeah I didn't. Sort of and I don't software. regret it. I don't regret having a whole phase. I had a lot of fun. I especially so many female friends have, and they they're like some of my friends now they're like I don't regret it I'm glad I did people it. will be so judgmental about it but that's the thing true. that's so frustrating is it's human nature and honestly people are judgmental about it I just feel like they're low-key jealous like I think you know I think it's about like how you grow up too you know like I grew up very Baptist I'm <laughs> for this thing from a Baptist now I don't discount religious beliefs I completely respect them I, I you do what you want to do I don't care but I think that there's a lot of guilt that's put on people so like they don't like to admit that maybe they did have a whole phase or you know, a more promiscuous so background. here is my issue I do not not respect religion but don't push religion on everyone else because okay. you may believe that having sex with one person for the rest of your life is the way you want to live your life and i respect that but you should also respect other people's wishes for i don't like i don't care to have one partner for the rest of my life mm -hmm. i personally think it's boring i mean now i wouldn't mind it so, i've already had my experiences and i've already crossed off the majority of my bucket list sexually so like, as far as, like, types, you know, like, I've had friends that are, like, I don't even understand, like, what I'm looking at on these dating apps, and they'll go through, like, kind of conservative channels, gay or straight, doesn't matter. I have friends, like, all over the spectrum, and they'll look at things, and they're like, I don't even know what poly and pan, like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, older people that are in the dating world, they're just, like, so confused, like, where in the hell did this come from? And, like, I know what polyamorous is. That's the, the pan thing, I don't really think I, I have a good idea. don't. I, okay. I'm pretty sure. No, I don't even want to say because I'm not sure what it is. So I don't want to say it's something to correct. I find it interesting. There's so many different choices now. Like you mark down, like Honestly, you can be a tree at this point. I don't and you understand have to check that. why it's. 
I don't understand why it's an option. Like if you like what you like, I mean, I guess like, so it's what shows up on your feed. Right. Um, so I guess like being able to say like, if you're, so for Tinder, it asks you, are you interested in men or women or both? So it's a right. very simple, what do you want? Men, women, or both? I choose both because I I like men and women. So um, that kind of makes it more interesting, especially on Tinder. You kind of, I also like to meet friends on Tinder, like girlfriends. Like, mm -hmm. so a lot of people like will just want friends and not relationships. So like right. you can meet girlfriends. One of my on friends Tinder. is telling me, she's like, I'm fine with meeting friends on this. I'm fine with that. You have good conversation. Yeah. You meet someone at an art museum or whatever. But then there's just like times when like one of my girlfriends will text me and I'm like, get offline, like run, like delete your profile, block everyone. And, and that was me. Run for the hills. I like. deleted every single dating app and I have not touched it. I'm clean from dating apps for like four months. I mean, now. there's definitely a curiosity because, like, I've been with the same person for, like, 14, like, almost 14 years now, and we met very organically, but it's also, we met the trashiest way possible. Oh, he was my bartender. I love it. Oh, <laughs> that's so fun. That's okay. Better than we my story. We just were chilling, and, like, I gave him a really cheap tip. And What'd then... you tip him? Like, a dollar? I totally took him a dollar. I was so wasted. And then I, he gave me free wine all night, but then I gave my phone number at the end of it. And he called, your dollar he, he called to collect 30 minutes later. And I was not giving in. I was like, I'm, I'm going home to go to bed. I did go back and have one drink with him. And we just kind of made plans to hang out at a later time, but I was not trying to think about that. I tell him all the time, I'm like, I love you, but you were not my type. The first time I met you, I said it was your personality. I've always heard that's like how it is though. Like, like it's not supposed to be your type no it, you never it's never the person that you think you're supposed to be with. I always hear opposites track and I disagree I think I, I think you, you have an opposite, opposite curiosity I, I think it's fascinating for some people I don't think it's opposites always attract call but I cocky. definitely think it's kind of curiosity that does it call me cocky if you will Mysterious. but if I could date someone just like me it would I think it's because I know myself and I'm a great human. Do you think you would get bored after a while though? Oh hell no, I'm so much fucking fun. <laughs> like I date myself and I have like, honestly, like I have been like, the most single I've ever been in my whole life for this past year, like most single, pretty much celibate. And I have pressy pretty much because I get drunk sometimes and make mistakes, but that's totally fine. Happens to the best of us, yeah, but so pretty much I'm celibate. Uh, that time off, yeah, it's totally fine. Um, I slept, it's I fine. <laughs> But um, no, I have never been happier to like just dating myself and like just not thinking about dating because I have dated for years and just never, it's always the same stuff. Like, especially with men on dating websites, they're always the same people. They just want hookups. They're yeah. not going to respect you. And like, at the same time, do you think they all have an MO? Like, do you think that there's a way that ladies out there could tell like, okay, this guy's really cute. He seems like he's into me. Like, do you have any advice for that? Like, how would you just I think make there sure? should be a Yelp page for that i think there should be a yelp page for like a rating kind of yeah. like the chinese like zero that. out of ten don't recommend right <laughs> very bad, and bad like they and rate you know there's um you know the social experiment what is it the social um God, I can't oh i think you're talking about yeah it's like okay. in china they have that you know where you know, everyone gets a rating it's kind of like that black mirror episode the squid games <clears throat> no, it's a good of the Black Mirror episode where it was literally the social credit system. That's what I'm thinking. And my brain is like, anyway, a couple it's martinis, a couple of glasses of wine. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like it's like almost like, you know, this they should have maybe some kind of rating system. They do it for Uber, you know, so they they, well, the horror story that I saw, I think it was on Dateline. I can't remember. This person was going around killing girls on Tinder. Oh my God. Yeah. There's so many and stories like that. the girl was like emailing the corporate office from the way I understood it. And no one was really responding to her. And that's horrific to me because then he ended up raping other women. Yeah. And killing. I think I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name. I'd have to look the it thing, up. The issue is there's many people like that on Tinder because yeah. Tinder and other dating websites do not do background checks. Anyone and everyone. I can think be. you should have to have some kind of review system. Which going into that. But then they create different profiles. And that's where it gets crazy. But the thing is, you have to like watch out. Like I was telling this girl I met last night that I Google people, I look at their social media, I try to get a feel for who they really are mm -hmm. before I actually meet them out in person, only because the last dating experience I had was with a human trafficker and I did not do hardly any research. I took his word on like everything he said, what she said, he owned a business, he was super successful. No, it's completely opposite. It turns out that he 
exploits the women. He lived in India. He exploited women. Him and his wife did it for years so bad that they got arrested three That's different terrifying. times and they fleeted to America and they're doing it here. And I literally found all this information out. It was like kind of terrifying because we went on two dates. And like, who knows what his plans with me were? Like he right. asked, he asked for my sizes and he put it in his phone under Abby and put my bra size, underwear size and shoe size. And obviously those are all fetishes. So like, yeah. I don't know what his plans were, but after I Googled who he was, he had such a big track record. He was, he literally like was embezzling money. If that's the right word. Um, like he was stealing money from people. Like he was a really crappy person. And that's when I deleted all my, my, all my dating apps. And I will never touch a dating app again, because you just, unfortunately, you don't know what you're going to get into. You don't know these people. Yeah. So at this point, I'd rather meet someone organically or just never meet anyone at all. <laughs> so I tease my mom every year on Valentine's Day how, um, like, up in Cleveland and a lot of other big cities, they do the speed dating. And I think it's the funniest thing I in think the it'd world. be fun. I think it would be hilarious I to go to the Marys. I, I didn't think that was a thing anymore. I don't know since COVID, but I know that every year they used to have a, um, I forget who did it. There was a, I don't know if it was one of the radio shows, might have been iHeart Radio. That's one funny. of them like did this thing where you do the speed dating and it was like, like a thing every year on Valentine's Day. You could buy tickets, everyone got this big dinner and then afterwards everyone like did their speed dating. I for... think that would be so lit. I would love to do that because like you get to meet people in person, but I don't know, as I'm getting older, I have a better intuition when it comes to meeting people. I can kind of get a better grasp of who somebody is as of when I was younger, before I learned, closed my frontal cortex, whatever the fuck it's called, my decision-making, yeah, my decision-making process, I couldn't see it. Like, I always put people on, like, a pedestal, and I would see them for their higher selves, and I wouldn't see them for who they really are, so I would get myself into so much trouble that way, so <laughs> now I see you for who you are. I take everything you say seriously and literally I don't give you I'm always fascinated doubts, like by the things that people will do when like they will there's still people that will invite people into their home the first time and they've never met them and I'm like isn't that rule number one that you don't just yeah yeah I've done that quite a few times oh my god I'm an idiot well, it's okay. it's okay I moved I'm telling your mother I'm never telling you when we live again yeah no I've learned no it's time. weird it yeah. is weird because I don't think about it at first because you're like, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. And you're in the moment. But yeah. No, but I don't do that anymore. So don't do that. And also, like, just don't hook up. Like, I think hookups. So when I was younger, I thought hookups were a power move. And I was like, yeah, like, I am <laughs> playing these men. But it was after, like, I got older, I realized it was more of... <laughs> I needed therapy. <laughs> I just needed some therapy Honey, um, and some self-respect, unfortunately. And I'm not saying people who hook up don't respect themselves, no, but it's a mean, different level. Like when you kind of get more of an understanding of why you're doing it. So yeah. I've known people over the years that like, that doesn't even phase them like at all as a person. Like I, mean, no clue, I can like, hook whatever. up with somebody and I won't be phased by it, but they don't think about but, it. Like, you know, and they're like my age, you know, and they still kind of do that kind of thing and it's like I no don't offense I've dated people your age and they're the worst I believe it older men are the fucking worst so I thought okay <laughs> I like I was like what am I doing wrong so I used to always go for like 25 to yeah. like 28 year old like that was like my age range mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this is terrible. Like these men suck. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna date older. When I say older I shocked this guy. So I'm like I was dating uh 50 Two year old. That was the human trafficker. Um, and I dated a. 40, Don't do that, ladies. Don't I dated. That. <laughs> I dated a forty two year old, which that was to me. That was a perfect age. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this could actually be something. But he was the biggest fuck boy. Like, if I wanted to date a frat boy, which is how he acted, <laughs> I would date a frat boy. Like the traditional frat boy. Yeah. So, like okay, so that kind of segues without us all being like super sexist ladies. What kind of advice would you give a guy either on dating apps or meeting girls organically? Like, okay, does he want a relationship? Or does he, what is he? Some guys I've known over the years, like one of my best friends, he's now married, but it's like, I knew in high school, he was always just wanting to meet someone that was just someone that he could be with, period. Um, you know, it didn't matter if it was like a long-term relationship. It's just like, let me have somebody in my life. Cause I think most people, men and women want someone they can just kind of be with. I mean, now there are the angry, the, I call it, sorry guys, I don't mean to offend anyone. The angry penis men who like they get broke up with, no they don't syndrome. deal with it and they just 
have sex with everyone that they could possibly have sex yeah. with. But that's I mean, fun. you know, that's one thing. So you probably as a woman would avoid that. But as a man, it's like, okay, say someone breaks up with you or, you know, they're on a dating site. And it's like, if you don't know what you want and you're just hanging out. All right. So I'm best gonna... way to meet a girl bar. <laughs> Oh, no, not, not a bar. A bar. So here's the, the coffee shop. Yeah, here's the thing. Okay, don't <laughs> try to plan to meet up past like 7 p.m. Like to me, that's disrespectful. Take her out to dinner if you want to actually be serious. Mm -hmm. Pay for her. Unfortunately, it's very, what's the word? Double standards. Yeah. But it's also, it shows like when you put money to something that it's usually something that you value. So like you're showing that you value them by putting money into them mm -hmm. um so I think it's really important mm -hmm. to take them on like a dinner date like a traditional yeah. like courting type sort like yeah situation. okay and then pick her up well that's hard because I don't you can feel meet at the same place I don't feel comfortable like being picked up so but I think offering like because if you offer I, I I like that like yeah. even though I'll probably be like it's okay I'll meet there because I don't know you yet right. um so offer to pick her up pay for dinner, mm -hmm. take her out to an actual dinner. And I'm not saying anything rich, like expensive or bougie, but no. like, I it's mean, dinner. fuck, at least Olive Garden. You know, <laughs> like, sheesh. Not Applebee's. For some reason, Applebee's has an awful, like, name for it, but Olive Garden is, like, the same concept. I'm not going to lie that Applebee's Southwest chicken salad is kind of amazing, and I will Applebee's eat that. has good food. Depending on what Applebee's, because there are some shady chefs in the Applebee's well, in the area that I live food, in. But, so. Yeah. Um, okay, also, watch what you wear. Segue here. My dog is growling and he's letting him out of my office. <laughs> he's ready. <laughs> well, while she's doing that, um, okay, another thing that you can do is, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, watch what you dress, how you wear, like, what, you, what you're wearing, how you wear, but watch what you're freaking wearing. Don't wear basketball shorts. Actually dress up and be presentable. Mm -hmm. I think there's nothing more unattractive than someone who doesn't try. Brush your hair. Like, have some respect. Yeah. Just make it like you want to yeah, be on a date. Here's date. the thing. Unless Women, you are, a, unless you're a coach and you only have five minutes before and you're like, I apologize, I apologize. Then do not That's make different. the date, honestly. Because hear me out. Women do so fucking much for dates. Get our nails done. Spend money on getting them done. Spend money on getting our hair done. We do our makeup and our makeup's expensive. I'm not even going on a date tomorrow. I'm I going mean, to a wedding. Literally. <laughs> but like, you know, like your nails done, hair's done, makeup's done. You wear nice clothes. I bought a whole new dress for my human trafficker date. You know, I spent $70 on that. Like, see? yeah, women do a lot of work to go see, on dates. He kind of trapped you because the way you were telling me is that he still took you out to dinner. Oh, it was great. It was like honestly one of the best dates I've ever been on. Like so he's just don't be creepy so on that manipulative. Date. But he he was creepy and I didn't see it. Uh, that's you were really just trying to have fun and some cocktails. Yeah, yeah, and it was a really well. Actually, I wasn't drinking, but it was a really good time. I should have drank. Now that I'm thinking of it, you should have got some expensive. Yeah, I should have. That he's, situation. He's a fucking least. weirdo. Which I want to <laughs> prank call him, but. Oh yeah, like he was like that was just, a great podcast today though. Let's just pray call the weird guy. Oh my god, that'd be great. He <laughs> answered like you remember me. <laughs> uh, it gets canceled immediately. <laughs> KB Rose and Herman Ashray is canceled. <laughs> canceled. No, he'd come find me and kill me, probably. Yeah. Sure. You have me. Older cousin crazy over here. But yeah, so those are the things I would say for a man. Like what I look out for. Um also don't bash your ex 100%. I think that's super don't much. talk about your ex really at all unless there's a significant thing like my wife died. Unless, like, you also yeah. like, like, for me, it's I don't just, want to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, well, I don't want to hear about it. I don't mind hearing about past relationships, but like, I mean, because I was, I was previously married, so a lot of people right. like to ask about the divorce, why I was married, why I was divorced, right. all these things. So, like, I will talk about that. And I'm honestly interested to hear why your last relationship ended. And I'm interested to hear what you have to say about your ex because kind of like a detective, you're like, okay. Because if you're going to say, if you're going to sit there, if you're, if you dated someone for three years and then all you can say is bad things about them, something negative, and it's something that someone who was your best friend, someone who you love with all of your heart, for three years and you can sit there and all you can do is just completely bash them I don't trust you because like that means that like you're sorry I mean unless they completely absolutely obliterated you and fucked you over 100% then I get it because you know I don't have a lot of good things to say about my ex because he was a really piece of shit but I'm also not going to sit here well I just call him a piece of shit but I'm not <laughs> fuck. I'm not going to sit here no names here I'm not going to sit here and just completely dog him because I think that's <laughs> childish and you know, I did have a lot of love yeah. for him for a long time. So, like, I'm not going to tear and dog him. He did a lot of stupid things. So do you think that even though you got married very young, do you think you learned a lot about yourself and how you perceive, like, 
you know, what kind of relationship that you want or how you want to, you know, how you want to go forward and what you're actually looking for. Do you think that so it lesson learned in that case? It actually confused me a lot because my whole life, I always just wanted to grow up. I wanted to have a family. Like I wanted to have a husband and like three kids. Right. That was my end goal. I didn't even have like, that's what I thought I wanted to be as a wife and a mom, which is gross, right? <laughs> no offense to anyone who is. Like, there's no judgment, but like, it's just not for me. So, it like, for me either. It's just not. <laughs> so, um, I was really, I was really lost because I gave up a softball scholarship to go live with this man because he was in the military. Oh, I dropped out of college to be with him. You know, like I put my whole life on hold to be with him. And in return, I was abused and I was cheated on. So like, I was completely confused because I planned my whole life around him. So don't do that. Always have like, no. the thing with a healthy relationship is what I'm finding is you have to be your own individual people. You can't, cause right. well, I always thought like, I have to be them, you know, like I, I thought like we have well, I to. Think, I think yeah. that's why my husband and I do very well is because I can do this with you. My husband is downstairs hanging out with now my dog because we just made him leave. But I mean, I don't get mad at my husband for hanging out with his friend every Friday. He has a couple of friends. It's so important I don't, to have that time. I don't like call him and text him every five hours. Now, if it's 11 o'clock and I'm like, hey, you said you'd be home at 1030. Are you okay? And if he's like, I am sorry, we're doing this. And he's always overly honest about what he's doing. <laughs> and sometimes like, you don't have to get into that much detail, but I appreciate it. Um, cause I think honesty is very important in a relationship, yeah. but it's, sometimes it's funny cause I'm like, oh, and then what happened? It's just like a whole story. But I think that, you know, if you can't allow that person to be themselves, it's not really a partnership because yeah. a partnership is like two sides. I also you know. think it's really important to let your partner know, like if you have like, I, and I don't know if this is just me like trying to figure out how the dating world works but if you like have thoughts of wanting to cheat or you're interested in another woman I really think you should voice that with your partner and I think mm -hmm. you should be able to be adult enough to talk about it and be right. like you know I, I like you know we've been together for 14 years and mm -hmm. you know like I like I get it and like kind of just being open and I'm not saying having an open relationship but like I feel like being together with someone like I don't know if I believe in monogamy anymore and I think it's because every I've been in three serious relationships that were at least two years or longer and I've been cheated on every single relationship and I'm not gonna toot my own horn but I'm honestly a great girlfriend mm -hmm. I will treat you like a king I will cook for you like amazing meals I will buy you gifts I will be 100% loyal to you but I always end up being cheated on and I'm starting to believe that I don't think monogamy is real because it's just such a human made concept because I really don't think you have one soulmate. I think you have multiple soulmates mm -hmm. that fulfill different parts of you because one person cannot fulfill every single aspect of you as of you can't feel, fulfill every single aspect of somebody else. Well, that's why you have your girlfriends, you know, you have different soulmates. Like I have male friends or complete like friendship mates, soulmates, but not in that, that way, yeah. you know, and then I have like girlfriends that like, if I were into girls, I would have married them yesterday. You know, it's like, there's just a different dynamic. I think with human, it's human and we're humans, yeah. you know, we like what we like. And I, I don't think that monogamy is for everyone at all. I completely agree with that. Yeah. And well, I also pull out pull up, polygamy also isn't for everybody either, but like, I'm starting to be more polyamory. Polygamy is where you marry more than one person. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, you can probably marry more than one person at the same time. Lots of people. It's a thing that like, it's, oh, it's, it's like, like they very... call those poly relationships. Poly. Polygamy, basically. Yeah, polygamy. Gotcha. Yeah, po polyamorous. I was like, wait a minute. I think polyamorous is another word for it. It's like, um, oh, I'm polyamorous. I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm polygamy, like some polyamorous. Um, but is, it's different. I don't, think, I could, like, I I don't think that I have more, I think I have more conservative leanings as far as that goes, but I think it would be a very difficult thing to navigate. Is it conservative or is it traditional? Because I, I think, think it's more of a traditional thing. Because like I think tradition works for some people. Like it's kind of it works for me because it kind of I mean it does work. I think that it's I feel personally that relationships are work. It doesn't matter what kind of it could be a friendship, it could be you know a dating you know moment. If the two parties that are going on the date are not into it or not willing to work at the date. Cause you know, we've all, I've been on dates, like when I was in my twenties and it was just like, are you even here? Like, um, I'm gonna, that's another yeah. thing, you know, it's like, are you actually here for a date? Or are you here for a hookup? Cause I thought we were on a date. So since you brought up that topic, two things also to look for on a date. If a man is like this the whole time on his phone, 
there is nothing more disrespectful. I will not. If you, okay, it's different. I'm like, oh my God, I'm sorry. My mom texted me. I'm just responding really quick. Like, I'm sorry. And you, you explain know? it and away. You, you respond and like, put it, put it away. It's fine. But if you're sitting there like scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through Twitter, oh my God. Yeah, that's, that's, that you're not. Uh, let me, me tell you this story. Place. My ex-boyfriend, story, unfortunately, um, which is so stupid. My ex-boyfriend. So on my birthday, he, my friend planned a surprise birthday party for me. He canceled it. He said, they texted him like, hey, we plan a surprise birthday party for Abby. Can you bring her here at this time? He was like, oh, we already have plans. So he told my friends that he made plans for me. You know what the plans were? I spent $70 getting my nails done. I spent like $50 getting my hair done. I got a new outfit. I looked fucking hot. And I go over to his house. He's sitting on his couch. No plans. I went, I bought myself pizza. Oh he my didn't gosh. give me a gift. He didn't get me a like cake. He I'm didn't disrespectful. Yeah. And he canceled. It gets worse. So I'm instantly irritated. I'm guessing this is what led to the breakup. <laughs> yeah. The first one. And then I got oh, back Jesus. with him. I'm an idiot. Don't be like me. Um, 26. It's okay. It was I was 20. I was like 22. Three, so I was. I'm a little more mature now. I will God, say. I've been there, um, so I can tell you stories about my youth. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. So that night was awful, and I was like, okay, I need to leave. I need to get out of here. So I ended up leaving, and he literally locked himself out of his apartment. So I had to go pick him up. <laughs> so I was gonna leave and go hang out with my girlfriend at the hookah bar, <laughs> like, what? and drink, you know. So then I went, had to go pick his ass back up, brought him to my apartment because he locked himself out of his apartment. I went, I stopped and bought myself a bottle of wine, and he bought himself beer like nothing like he didn't do not one goddamn thing for me that whole my whole birthday which I'm not the kind of person to make big deals about my birthday but you canceled a surprise birthday party for me. like yes. you know like if you didn't cancel that that I would never have felt my boy but then it gets worse like so we're sitting on my couch I'm pissed because I wanted to go hang I out with my friends girls. that were females that were like that like, yeah. okay, let's hang out but then like you yeah but anyways I'm really <laughs> so we're sitting on my couch I'm drinking my wine he's on his phone He's on Instagram. He's looking at these like gorgeous women. I'm tip- I'm not an insecure person, but he was sitting there zooming in on their ass and on their tits, like right in front of me. I was just like, are you fucking serious? Like you've ruined my whole day. And yeah, I got back with him like a few years later. Don't, don't you. I that. dated a young man. I'll say a young, a, a gentleman. A young, a young, young lad. <laughs> when I was a young lady. No. <laughs> Bobby's a green. Bobby's a green. That's all I remember. Yeah. What's a fun time? No, I had a. I dated a guy before I met my husband, and I will not name his name because if he hears this, he knows exactly who he was. But um, yes, I dated this person, and um, it was a work relationship. Oh, those are fun. You know, and um, so taboo, you know? yeah, mm-hmm. and it was like back and forth. I found out between me and another person that we both worked with. And I was 24, 25 at the time. And like, I, I knew better. I, I knew, I totally knew. But at that point, because of who he was going after in between, which she ended up kind of being like a sugar mama to him is the best way I can describe it. Um, it was more like out of spite for me at that point. That's why I was still dating him on and off. Yeah, oh, oh, I, I, yeah it was, it was kind of like this person, I already knew this person didn't like me. Um, this person confronted me in the bathroom at work long before I ever dated mm-hmm. this person. And he wanted to date me before he ever dated her. And it was youthful and stupid. And if I had it all over to do again, I probably would not have done that. But wouldn't you have done that? Is that because he was like a work person? Um, no, it's because of how it ended. I mean, I completely ended it, but I caught him in bed with her. And I didn't, but I will say that when I did catch him in bed with her, it was more like a... Um, I knew he was there, didn't come to work that day. I knew he was there. And the thing that always cracks me up is I was so happy to see him there because it allowed me to let go. Mm. It was, it was just insane. Like, um, I feel that. Yeah. It was like, I have these witchy moments and I saw five crows eating a dead squirrel in front of his house. And I said, thank you guides. I'm a little little weird. People who've never listened to me before. I'm a little Spiritual on the I say, spectrum. I don't know. Here. I don't think I'd say but, weird. I think people are spiritual because I'm learning. And I'm, it was like a sign. I'm like, on a I saw it. I knew what it was. I knew journey. what was happening. Yeah. And I, it was so, I laughed actually. I walked into his house. His roommate let me in. Like, hello. Like, 
He's with a girl. Another girl came to your Isn't house, there a boy dude. Code? Isn't there a boy code? There has to be. See, my issue is that I... was the funniest part about it. His roommate let me. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't mean about it. I confronted him. I all I said was, "I just want to let you know," because I looked at her and I said, "I've been shagging your this guy for the last year and a half, and I've known about you, and I'm sure you knew about me." Um, I just want to let you know, and I look at him, I'm like, I'm so glad this happened. And I clapped and I said, I am so happy that you did this because it just allows me to know what a piece of shit you are. And I'm done with you. I'm just not interested in anymore. And then the same person has tried to email me since I got married, has tried to like text me in, or not text me, but like message me on like, I don't know, whatever. And like, I tried to let go of it. We tried to be friends for a while, but then he made some snide marks about my husband on Facebook. And I was like, bye. Yeah, like so he's married. No, oh, it's been probably 11 years since I worked with this person. See, I have a thing for men. I don't just, I don't hate him. I wish him well. He's had some things happen in his life. Um, like one of his kids almost passed away of a deadly disease. So I mean, I'm sure that he's grown in some capacity. Um, he and I are both Libras, so we had that. Our birthdays were a few days apart. He likes spooky things. I like spooky things. But I, I don't want to say this person's a horrible person because I honestly don't know him anymore. But it, that was my lesson in life to learn how to go, this is what I want. I don't want this person that calls me at two o'clock in the morning for a booty call. I, no. I don't want that. And you know what? Absolutely I was not. just telling my friend that they actually You don't want somebody snap. like that. If they can't take you on a date, yeah. And that's, I remember telling this person, if you can't take me on a date, I'm not, you're not calling me. And they finally took me on a pity date. Oh my God. Night. You know what pisses me off? So I went on a date the other day. So I did meet a guy on Tinder months ago before yeah. I deleted my right. Tinder. And cool guy. He's a basketball player at this place in France. Like he was yeah. actually a big, like big time guy. And like, right. um, he's, uh, like he works for a college like a big time college now. Um, like decent guy on paper, but when we went on a date, like, and he's like, honestly, he, he talked so highly of his, um, he was married, his ex-wife, he's older. So he's, I think he was 46. I like older guys. Um, so he was 46 and he was just talking very, very highly of his ex-wife. Like he never said anything bad about her. I really respected that. Cause I mean, I, I used to be very insecure when I was younger and I didn't want to hear a thing about your ex. I didn't want to hear anything about women. I don't want you to talk to them. I was so possessive. Um, I think the more I realized that I'm bisexual, the more I'm like, oh yeah, like she's hot or, you know, like I, I can kind of be with it. And I'm also very secure in who I am. And I know like what I have to bring. To I used to, to be very jealous when I was first dating my husband and like, it wasn't because of my husband. It was because of the relationship that I was just talking about. Like I had had this person and, do and it that just really you. and even if I was voluntarily going into those situations I just at that point was thinking that all men just cared about sex I'm sure a lot no, of really do um there's a lot yeah. of women that are the same way though don't get me wrong there are a lot of women that are exactly and I the used same to be way. like that and I used to be like that honestly actually I was dating this one guy for a good like almost two years we dated on mm -hmm. he was a really good guy and honestly when he started so we stopped talking completely. He started mm -hmm. dating this new girl and he actually messaged me on Instagram. He's like, Hey, I just want to apologize. I feel like I, I did not treat you like I should have. Um, like I did not treat you like a gentleman should have, like he completely apologized wow. to me and he was a great guy. And I, I apologize back. I'm like, you know what? No, like, I'm sorry. I never let you in. I never appreciated. Like, I didn't know how to appreciate the things because it made me very, I, I did not know how to handle but it. But that's an amazing thing. How often do you think that ever happens? Ever. Never. Because it's that's like a 2020 time. episode of just like, word in. Well, the thing guy is, like, apologizes for being a dick and was, a girl apologizes for being an asshole. The thing is, he wasn't like, a what? dick. It's just like, we are both on T1. I just, never felt worthy of him he was yeah. such a good guy and because I was treated so lowly by so many men for so long like I didn't think I was worthy of how he was treating me like he took me on great dates like he would treat me very well but he also never wanted to take it to that next level and I noticed with this but I don't think I allowed him so like we kind of were on yeah. mutual levels that we both was this after the ex-boyfriend that you were talking so One we, of, we dated, breakups? yeah, so okay. we dated in between. Don't you love that? Yeah, it's so like, fun. Yeah, well, we date, so we dated in between me and his, mine and my ex-boyfriend's uh, breakup. And then after me and him broke up the second time that he started dating this other girl very seriously and they're engaged now. And I'm so happy for him. Like, he's a great guy. They bought a house together. They have a great, like, like cute little puppy and they're getting married. Like, yeah. you know, like I couldn't be more happy for him because he's a great guy and he does deserve that. We just, right. you know, see, I, I know a lot of things, which is fine. 
But I just, I'm starting to realize that the more I get older, or the older, wiser I get, that like, <laughs> I don't know. I just you do kind of. I think you know because we're it's a different age, but I think we have so much in common. So never, never. we're so great. That's why. But I think. <laughs> Don't tell them that we're that conceited. I mean, I'm God, Abby. Abby. I'm <laughs> chunky and funky and I love it. What's up? I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I just don't care anymore. Like, I know what I have to offer and I know who I am as a person. And if you can't, if you can't accept me for how I look when I have so much to bring with my personality and my You're drive. Beautiful. Who cares? And I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I think I'm conventionally attractive. I am, I am bigger though, um, which I've always been self-conscious my whole life, but I just, I don't care because I don't think weight really We're all matters. working on ourselves. I, 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 I try really hard not to care about my waistline or what, if I have the eyelashes and the extensions on, cause I am a girly girl. I sell Mary Kay. I'm not gonna lie. It's totally like one of, I, don't I pretty much Kay. sell Mary Kay for my own. I, I sell it to myself. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but it's like I enjoy makeup. I enjoy hair. Uh, when I was a little girl, I would put skirts on my head because I wanted to have long hair. Nice. And my mom used to tell me I look like Yasser Arafat. If you don't know who that is, you might be too young for that. No. But it was an uh, Arabian leader That's of, wild. I think, Libya. I don't remember anymore. It's all blur. The '80s were a thing. But um, yeah, and they all wore, you know, the, not, it wasn't a hijab. It was just. It looked like a skirt with a band around their head. It's the only way I could describe it to you. I, but, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but that's that's, that's pretty much, I can't think of the name of it. So I apologize to anyone who's listening to this. I'm really not trying Just to. Just tell me what you. the name is so we can be educated, not disrespectful. Yes, educated. please. Um, I know a hijab and that's about it. But I know really about. pretty hijabs actually. Yeah, no, I think hijabs are beautiful, and I just respect all cultures. I always kind of want to see people's hair underneath of them, even if that's like that's the whole purpose. I know a hijab is like. Yeah. I, as a woman, I'm like, can I just come and, on, you know, and they yeah. can't. They can't. Yeah, it's so not, you know, it's not for us. Yeah, oh, it's Sorry, for their husbands. Secretly, yeah, it, I think it's just more than that. But I don't understand it. So. It's kind of beautiful in the way if you're like doing that. You know, it's like only people that see it are like immediate family. Or like your husband or your wife. Whatever, I know a lot of times. Know? Sometimes it's, a, it's like a ceremonial thing as well yeah. because I um, went to high school in a very diverse high school, and um, you know, a lot of my friends didn't. They they wore he, um, hijabs for like ceremonies mm -hmm. and certain purposes, like weddings and stuff. I had friends but they that wouldn't chose it or they chose not to. Yeah, like I had a really good friend in high school who was like, "Uh, uh I ain't marrying that guy," and she like ran away from home. Yeah, <laughs> like what? Yeah, yeah. But like all her sisters, they like would pick different patterns every day, you know, and they come in. And I was like, "That's really cool, actually." Like you don't realize until you're like exposed to it, you don't even think about it. Well, the thing is, kind of like relationships. That's their normal. Yeah, just like our normal is not wearing a hijab. That's why. Yeah. I don't judge it. I don't like. People... I think that I should most days because my hair is a hell of a mess. But it's not about my hair. Yeah, it's really but... not about my hair. Yeah, so <laughs> not at all. I respect all cultures and everybody. I think I know. Is... I well, like the I diversity. The more so... I do, and like the more you're exposed to things, the more the the less you know. Not that people are prejudiced, but the less they're like, oh, I don't know about this. Like, what's this? And it's people really just about understanding or ask, just ask questions. You the know? thing is, ignorant people get very uncomfortable around something that's not their normal, but mm -hmm. that's what makes them ignorant. So like when someone is racist against someone who wears like a hijab, it's because they have never stepped out of their comfort zone enough right. to be able to understand it from someone else's and point of view. That, and I think that's really weird. Like and when I, think I grew so up, low. you know, I grew up Baptist, like super bunch of white people and anyone of color was usually bussed in to my elementary school. There were like maybe 20 kids of color in my elementary school, but it was pretty much an all white neighborhood. And then that changed gradually over time. I went to junior high school. And then in high school, it, the majority, it was like 60, 50. And I will, I can honestly tell you, I have people of color in my family. My nephew is a person of color. And I am just so fascinated by people who don't know anyone of color. I'm just like, it boggles my mind at this point. And that's another thing. It's like, you know, with relationships, it's like, you know, when parents back in the day, like not necessarily my generation, but maybe like when my sister, she would graduate in the 80s, your mom about the same age. You know, if you dated someone of color, that was very like taboo. Yeah, it was really un not accepted. And I think that I'm really grateful for growing up when I, I am like where I'm at now, because right. 
it's more accepted. However, it still is like you still get looks because you know my ex boyfriend was. I black. can't even imagine like people. Like, I can't honestly cannot imagine looking at someone like I don't know. Maybe I'm just naive. It sometimes, but I mean the no, way I, I don't. I think the way I grew up, you didn't look at that differently. Now my father was very adamant with my sister about not dating a man of color. And then I just he think it's so changed, but when she had children, those were his grandkids yeah. and he didn't care anymore, which is weird. It was like a learning experience for my dad. I'm grateful for so that. So I just will never understand what makes someone different with their skin color or their religion or. I, I think just, it's the way people are brought up, you know, like, it, like my dad and my mom, they both grew up in the fifties and segregation was still alive, you know? So here's my problem with that. Yes. I can respect it. It's hard to up. like think differently in that mindset too so i can respect that you grow up in a way however humans adapt and mm -hmm. that's your responsibility to educate yourself to become to adapt to the proper and also not only that but you have to have morals i couldn't imagine mm -hmm. if i was who i am and i lived back in like the 40s the 30s right. i cannot see myself being a slave master if that was no. back in those days i don't even know that but i think that some people probably i don't i'm not i'm not justifying it at all by any means but i think when i look at how people thought back then either it was fear-based or it was or do you think it was more like Hey, this is the way I'm, I'm brought up. I don't know any other way. I like, think that they don't, some more... people don't know. Like, look at the people in the South. It's like everyone was friends, but then you still had a very strong opinion. And it's like when it comes like relationships, without getting like way off topic, but like when it comes to relationships, you know, if you're dating someone of color, you know, then it's like not just black, but I mean, it could be someone that's Asian, it could be someone that's, you know, Hispanic, you know, and you still, you know, the cultural things could be another thing that can divide or, or bring together a relationship in dating. I think, but that's why I think people need to be open-minded. And I, I agree with that. Like you have to be, if you're closed-minded and you can only accept what you've known, you'll never grow and you'll never mm -hmm. be able to become a better human. If all you want to do is be surrounded by white people and all you want to do is eat American food and all you want to do well, it's is- It's the same thing with gay versus straight too. It's like my husband, um, had a lot of friends. He would hang out in gay bars sometimes when he was in his 20s because it was where everyone went because he was a server. And he had like some gay men who were like completely into him. And he would always say, I'm very flattered, but I'm not interested because I, I don't like dudes. I'm a guy who likes straight women. You know, I'm here with my friends, but thank you. I'm very flattered that you would even like think that I was attractive. Like he never to him, that was just weird that you would get offended that someone would think you were attractive. And he's very, like, well, depending on how you perceive Dave sometimes. <laughs> he's very straight male. <laughs> yeah, it depends on his days. No, <laughs> well, Dave's on his period. Just kidding. Sorry, Dave. I love you. But no, it's like, I think that there are some guys who are very strong in their sexuality and they don't care. And then you kind of have to look at that with, with relationships too. You know, like there's some women, you know, if you're gay, there's some women they're like, have you dated a man? I, you dated a man before you ever knew you liked women? It's like, what? I think sexuality is a spectrum. I don't think anyone in the whole world can be 100% gay. Or I love women. Straight. I think boobs are attractive. <laughs> I think women's bodies are beautiful. Um, I think you're by curious. I don't think I've ever been like, eh, I want that. No, I have never really had that feeling. Where I was like, yeah, I want I that. Said that one for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I like, I like men. Yeah, know? I don't know. I, I guess carry, that also carry men in particular. I'm sorry, I'm like sorry. I, hate hate hair, hair. I love hair. Yeah, mm. I like a good hairy man. <laughs> yeah, I guess like I, I don't know, and I do have types. Like I do, I do like more masculine <laughs> me. women. So. You know, like if I were to date a woman, she would be more masculine. I kind of date a feminine woman because I'm feminine. So like I really? can't. Yeah. So there's a lot of women that they prefer like more feminine women in their also It's usually gay. the masculine masculine women, I would say from my experience. Like you almost always, almost always have a masculine woman and a female, like feminine woman. So what is okay, so it's like, you know, sexuality. It's like, okay, so you're into the I it's weird because you would think that if someone likes men and versus women like biologically are we naturally attracted to a masculine versus a feminine prototype i think 
it's a lot to do with society and I know tradition. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it'd be really hard for me to be able to see a really girly girl as gay. A, no, as a significant other, because I mean, gotcha. I can see him as gay. I mean, that's I guess an interesting I'm considered con- gay, but like, that's a, cons- that's a very interesting concept because I have talked to friends of mine who are gay and can't, they can't figure it out for the life of them. They're like, I don't get it. Like, I want a woman that looks like this, you know, traditionally like Vanna White, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and not at all in the least masculine so it's like everyone has preferences that's yeah. the thing you know uh, this girl I met the other day was like and it sucks because preferences make you seem shallow but it's okay like I was yeah. just I was watching a TikTok video the other day about this guy and he was like um it was like a stitch so this one guy was like oh well if someone's trans um yeah if they're trans and like it's a trans male or something and like you want to date them like you're you don't want them because they're trans you're transphobic no I disagree I think people are allowed to have preferences and I don't think that's right that you get to say that someone's transphobic because they don't want to date a biological male it's like guys that only like blonde hair blue eyed or they only like it's just it's a preference and that's okay people in this I think in today's society you're not allowed to have preferences Mm -hmm. and people think you're shallow because of it but I do have preferences you know we all have preferences yeah what we were born like attractive and as you know? humans it's our responsibility to make a judgment call so people are like oh you're so judgmental I don't think you should be offended because if someone isn't attracted to you why would you want to be with that person anyway well the thing is like you have to like you know yeah well you have to have preferences and like yeah you know like I completely respect the LGBTQ community because I'm a part of it however I do understand you know people's perspectives where if like they or if like a man really just loves women and they want to be with a woman who has a vagina, I definitely understand that, like, because that's, that's what you like to have sex with, you know, and it's not because they're transphobic, I'm sure people can still respect that, but the thing is, if they just like to have sex with a biologically, you know, woman, that should be allowed, and it shouldn't be like, you're transphobic, no, it should be that you have preference. I mean, there's a lot of people that will disagree, but yeah, there will be, and that's okay, because I disagree with what their thoughts are, but that's the thing as humans, like, we're allowed to disagree, and that's okay. People these days spend way too much time focusing on what they're angry with, rather than just seeing a person, and I couldn't blame the internet for that, which goes back to apps. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) It's like, oh, you are this, 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 and it's like everything's in a cookie cutter like triangle. And then I don't know. It's like you have these people who are, oh, I like fudge and I like going on walks in the park and then I want to fuck you. Yeah. There's well, no unfortunately if you meet someone on Tinder, that's all they want. They can give you a spiel. They can t- tell you. So this is a lot of my my experience with Tinder. You will literally make extravagant dates with somebody the day of. They're like, oh my God, we can't do this, but I can still come over at 11 if you want. No, I'm good. I'm in bed by like 9.30. That's when I shut people down. So like, I won't, like, and I don't put out now. I used to put out on the first date because I wanted it. It wasn't because I'm just a whore. It's because I'm, I mean, I am a whore, or was a whore, but I I wanted it, you know, like I did want it, but now I'm just kind of like, I don't want to have sex with you to the third date. If you don't respect that, that's fine. Go somewhere else because- that's right now my boundary is so if you had to give advice to somebody that is using apps or trying to navigate I guess I wouldn't say using apps because there's different ways to navigate dating in modern day in the modern day how would you what advice would you give to the modern dater as far as like looking for people like overall like as a one and done uh so um, deep breath here. Yeah, let me oh. see. Am I the one to ask this question? I would say set boundaries. That's the thing. You That's have to good. start off the bat. You have to set boundaries and also stop with the fucking bullshit of the, like, oh my God, I'm so perfect. I only eat this and I eat this. Like, because people put a front on. People put a front on yeah, when they start dating internet. somebody. Well, not like that, but like, even when you date someone in person, like you'll kind of be a different person until yeah, someone the honeymoon phase. gets to know you. And that to me is a red flag. That's Just, why I liked my husband because we didn't have a honeymoon phase. Yeah. Well, the thing is like, you have to be yourself right off the bat. Like you have to let people see who, who you really are right off the bat. Because if right. you wait, if you, if you act like a different person for a year and then all of a sudden you guys are living together and then you actually show them who you really are, they might not be attracted to who you really are. Right. So you kind of have to show them who you really are are off the bat and like show them the good the bad the ugly right off the bat like show them your flaws because 
if that's something they're not willing to accept now, they're never going to be willing to accept that. So um, I just stop with the trying to be perfect. No one's perfect. And if someone can accept that, then they have to move on to find what they think is perfect because everybody has their ideal of what perfect is. And well, it's like really, it, it sounds like so cruel. And I used to get so mad at my brother when my brother got divorced and he was dating. He would tell a woman, I'm sorry, I'm not attracted to you. And it sounds horrible because like I'm his sister. I'm like, you can't tell people that. But at the end of the day, I was shocked at how many people respected him being completely honest. But and I'm like, that's not how you date, Rob. Like, that's not how you date. Here's the you thing. don't date people like that. And I'm like cringy. And I'm like, you cannot be like that. He was like, I he's like, he's like, I told one lady, I'm you're not my type, but you have an amazing fucking personality. And I would hang out with you like nobody's business. And that's okay. And that's where you can set the like, boundaries of your friends. Like, and that's how he and he got away with it every single time. Well, it's not even getting away with it. I think it's respect. I mean, okay, yeah, you there's certain ways you can go about saying you don't have to be like, oh yeah, you're an ugly fuck. I'm on a track. No, we didn't say it like that. You know, you but like if you're if you're sorry, just like, but... I'm like, hey, I'm like, I let people like this is the thing though. So for women, it's a lot harder because men don't take no for an answer. Unfortunately, that's a big issue in society. So mm-hmm. I have found like there's this guy who literally he hits me up every like few months <laughs> hey you want a date no i'm not interested that's okay like we can be friends and always his response is oh i just find you so attractive i'd love to be your friend i'm like hold on friends, friends don't have to find each other attractive no, like it's a different no. way platonically so no. you're obviously not trying to be my friend you're trying to get sex out of me so no i'm not interested in your friendship no, you know do that tonight dude Sorry. yeah so I, I do let him i let i used to not though so where i get where your brother's coming from is because i used to even when i wasn't attracted to somebody i really wasn't interested in and dating them, I would continually make it seem like, yeah, we'll hang out eventually. We'll hang out one day. I'm just busy this weekend. Literally, and they wouldn't ever get the fucking hint. Like, it's not like for no. me, if someone did that to me, I'm never hanging, like, I'm never going to hit you up first again. You know, like, yeah. I'm not going to ask and hang out. But these men don't get it when you tell them that. They really right. think, oh, no, no, she's just and busy. And I think that's why he was so adamant just being honest, because he's like, I don't want to lead somebody on. That's rude. And I'm like, but the way you say things, and the yeah. way you say and, it. And I like, tell people that, too. I'm like, hey, I'm not interested <laughs> in dating right now. I don't have the time for it. I don't have the time to make for you. And I don't think you right. you deserve better than that. So I'm not interested in anything. Um, and sometimes they get it. Most times they don't. Unfortunately, men are hard headed, but yeah. Oh, most so yeah, just being honest going into it is a huge thing. But the one thing I had to laugh at is when he was dating, I was always amazed at how many people just were like, oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Good deal. And I'm like, because I would just never talk to you again. Here's the thing. We're all adults now. Like, if you're interested in dating, like, I just wouldn't talk to you Don't anymore. waste my time. I won't waste your and time. And that was always his thing. Don't it's, waste That's what time. it is. That's what it is. Because as you get older, your time is so much more valuable. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't want to have the run around with somebody. And, like, because who knows? For me, I'm a very loyal person. So, if I, I can't, I can only focus on one so person at a time. if you look at someone that's like, hey, I, I'm sorry, I only like blonde hair, blue eyes, two inches waist. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not interested, but I'll be more than happy to be your friend. You want to go to like watch the ball game at the bar on Sunday? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, and you're yeah. honest about the, it. That's the thing, though. Like, you're allowed to have a type. Like, I hate that society right. makes you feel like you're so shallow. See, that's my brother. That's an issue. <laughs> so, like, you know, even just last night, I was talking to this girl, and she was just like, "Okay, so what's your height preference?" I'm not and farting, I, by the way. It's my chair. She is farting. But I was like, I hate saying my preference because it does make me feel shallow. But I really enjoy a nice, tall person. Like, if you're six foot something, like I think you're all automatically still fucking attractive. I, I like it's a fetish, people. probably. Yeah, like but like, you know, but it makes me feel Isaac. shallow. So. So, yeah, but I worked at a company and there was a guy that used to come in. He was like, uh, not with DHL, he was with a private lab company. And I, I think his name was Mike. I can't remember. It's been so long ago. He looked exactly like Chris Isaac, like the musician. And I would just be like, oh, he's such a tall drink of water. Yeah. I, there's something yeah. about a tall man that was or a woman. And he was very tall and he was very polite. And like, I was like the administrative assistant manager sometimes i don't know what my job title was anymore because i used to train staff to do my job it was ridiculous but i was like 22 or something at the time it was right before i moved back to ohio from florida and he would just come in and be like hi how's it going and I'm like oh my god he looks just like chris isaac <laughs> number. And I, yeah. that's another thing i need to learn how to shoot my shot i don't know how to be direct i've had a crush on my boss for so fucking long I can't shoot my shot though. It's something about men in authority. 
It's my weakness. Dirty cool, yo. Yeah. Dirty cool. I like risks. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for enjoying <laughs> our show. Do you have any final thoughts? Abigail? I feel like we were all over the place. Sorry for that. We Enjoy. weren't. We weren't really that over the place. I, I brought us back in a few really? times. Keep, 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 keep. talk. No, but it's it's you know, ladies, be careful. Do your Google searches. Watch your 2020s. Watch your true crime shows. You will be with your pepper spray, do your ready own for that. Background checks. And They're do not free. leave your drinks alone at the bar. Yeah. No, I've been date right twice. Don't do it. Don't take a drink what from a guy fudge? either. Yeah, that's another story for another day. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, date rape was... drug, by the way. That's what I mean. Oh, not sorry. Okay. Date rape drugs. Not leaving on. I was about end. to have like a heart attack no, 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 and like send her to therapy five seconds later. Drugs. Jeez. Uh, okay. Therapy. <laughs> yeah. Does it work? Yes. We'll get into that. I used day. to have a therapist who did astrology. <laughs> that's really fun. It was so sad. He passed away a couple years ago. Oh, it was sad. amazing. Yep, he's in the stars now. Yep, he is totally (laughs) in the stars. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. I'm going to log off now. Um, Abby, any final words? No, she's like, bye. Bye. (laughs) I'm going home to do things anyway. Drink more wine. (laughs) That's what she said. Love you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. And if you want to see or hear any more of these fun topics, let me know. Peace out.